damn. What is with you sphinxes and the emotional manipulation? God, just cause y'all can't be together, everyone else has gotta be miserable, rude. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to The Legend of Vox Machina. We're now in season two, episode six, which is called Into Rhinecleft. I hope that's the way you say it. I might be getting that wrong. We'll find out soon enough in the episode. In the last episode, we had our girl Keyleth level up. They were on their way to find the next vestige when they were coming across another one of these elven claves something like that. I can't remember the name that they use for them right now. But yes, this one is around fire. And this was part of the journey that Keyleth was, was supposed to be on for Aramente. But of course, she's been sidetracked heavily by what's been, what's been going on. But anyhow, she recognizes that there's trouble in Pyra. So she and the team head over there and they discover that they need to close a rift, I believe it was, in order to basically stop the entire place from being swallowed up by these kind of dragon spirit things that are flying around and burning everything down. She meets up with her dad again as well, and we get a little bit of history on Keyleth, which is really, really cool, and we understand a little bit more about this Aramente that, to my understanding, it means she's gotta go through and basically master all the four elements like the Avatar. So I'm already down for that. I think it's gonna be cool. But either way, Keyleth in the end had to tap in and listen to some advice her mom gave her long ago around the fact that air and fire are entwined and that she owned it basically. And that's what she did. She went in there into that rift, took out what she needed to take out and ended up closing that rift all by herself. So she is now not only a master of air, but she's also a master of the fire after all of that, which is awesome. And outside of that, we see that Grog and that sword are getting a little too close for comfort. It's look looking like it's starting to really influence Grog and Grog is maybe starting to realize that this thing might be a little too evil to be handled, but we're just going to have to see. So anyways, now that they're done with that particular quest, the group is still going to have to continue on to see if they can find this next vestige. And I'm looking forward to continuing the journey. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. But just before I do a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I upload this show or anything else you might be watching of mine, if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell, you'll be the first to know. Also, if you love this video, please show it some love with some thumbs up and please keep those comments coming, guys. I appreciate them so much. You give me so much information and background and everything that makes this show so much more fun to watch. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Oh. Is this, uh, oh no, grog has got the beard. I was like, is this in the past? Him and that damn sword. Oh, he needs, he's feeding the sword. Uh-oh. I'm really surprised no one on the team is picking up on the fact that Grog is getting more erratic about this damn sword. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Seen that foreshadowing there, buddy? Get rid of that demon sword, bro. I'm starting to get the sense that on this quest, Grog's gonna be the one who ends up getting a weapon because he needs to get rid of that thing. Why won't you just get rid of it? Right? You notice Grog acting strange? Finally, Yalfa should be so much more attuned to this. You can't fault a guy for a player with his sword now and then. Okay. Why can't you ever just be sincere? Yeah, that defense mechanism. Hopefully we'll get into it one day. Still, you have her vestige now. Maybe you could ask her for help. Uh, she doesn't seem like the talking type things. from what I've seen. Or the glaring and cutting, cutting cords type. You could try. <laughs> She's not wrong. You could try. Who's watching? Oh, God. That's great vision. I'm as cold as a corpse. And I'd rather not repeat that experience. How many dead jokes are we gonna do for for her for a while? I'm fine. You're not, Purse. But we appreciate the chivalry. Mmm. Let me help. Oh, hey. she's looking at me. I'm like Trash. the master of fire now, guys. Did you guys see that? I became the master of fire? That's me. <laughs> Grog, what are you Don't you worry, Scatling. Uncle Grog oh, is hey, gonna hey, keep I... you warm. I don't know that you're the type who wouldn't like this. <laughs> Come on. About, about, about to go. Listen, 
we may not want to gr admit it, but when we become grown ups, there's a lot of things we would love to have still. If someone could carry me when I got tired, I would take that, please. Ancient runes? Oh, well, welcoming. I believe I can read some of it. Okay, let us of know, Of course you can. <laughs> Education's hot. Volantia. She loves that broom. Even though Scanlan found it. I keep forgetting Scanlan can float with that hand thing, so he doesn't really need the broom. That's ominous. There you are. So how do they get up there? More climbing? What is this place? A temple. An old one. Aren't they all? No, <laughs> right? Is there a young temple? And you're not smart enough to heed my warning. Who are you now? Not this again. Right? It's like we've already been through this. Enough. My mate sent you. It's yes. been centuries. Yikes. You say so. Oh, but hey, she wasn't like with anybody else, if you're worried. I don't think he was. But before I reveal it, you must prove your worth. Again, all we do is prove our worth. <laughs> Survive the endless labyrinth of misery. And and this? Or wound me. Oh. Wound the Sphinx. Uh, the dude is as old as time and he's never felt right? pain. Never stubbed his toe, poked his eye. Never had an ingrown hair on his peen. Ow. We choose to wound you. That was, I, you should have done the Gorgons. The Gorgons have been itching. Thank you. Oh. Told you, you should have beat the Gorgons. You have a chance to wound me in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Who dares go first? Gog. I'll go. I'm not letting anything happen to you again. Ooh, still beef between you and Paris, huh? Feed me, or I will feed myself. <laughs> hmm. That's what you get. Right, let's do this, Sphinx. Not Grog in an abusive relationship and hiding it. You've been touched by the matron of ravens. What do you know about that? Um, he's been around forever. Into the void. Oh, shit. He's fine. He just went back. But he will fall in the void forever. Unless one of you can see. Oh, well, that sucks. So who is next? Who wants to fall forever? You have no family left who actually cares for you. Damn. What is with you sphinxes and the emotional manipulation? God. Just because y'all can't be together, everyone else has got to be miserable? Rude. But you clearly know not where your strength comes That's from. That's what the guy in the what arena said. Did you just say? <laughs> Bye. There's gotta be another way. Hmm. You gotta start thinking with your heads. But I guess that's not Vox Machina. Okay. Okay, bud. Valiant. She held out the longest. You. All jokes and no heart. Damn. I wonder how you convinced Osisa to put her. She didn't care about him. That's why. Osisa. Before you vanquish me. Wound. Oh, mighty Sphinx. Emotional wound? He's going to emotionally wound you. <laughs> the song. Hey, the man didn't say it had to be a physical wound. Pain is pain and emotional is actually the worst kind. <laughs> the Sphinx is like. My man Scanlan may have no heart, but he sure can come up with the romantic scenarios. The imagination's unparalleled. Oh, not the fade away. Ooh, there's the wound. He's like, I can see your wife and you can't. How do you do? Do we have a tear? A sphinx tear? We do. Damn, Scanlan. You must know true love in your life. Does he? Oh, yeah. Or has he had a broken Guys, gals, heart? Anyone in between? That's not love. Lust. Perhaps you need to stop looking for love. Oh, the tail. Love. Find you. There's that. But you also just need to be vulnerable, and I don't think you're the type that likes to be vulnerable, Scanlan, hence all the defensive jokes. How about nice thighs yo touch me? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Don't ask questions, just be thankful. Millennia of existence. This is the wisest sage I've ever known. <laughs> just go for it. go with it. It is a pleasure to meet you. He is so much more relaxed than Azisa. Just in time. He's going to tell us where all the other vestiges are. Thanks, bro. Oh. The now that's a sword. Myth Connected to all myths and legends. 
including the other vestiges. My God, that's the size of Scanlan. Oh, okay. I'm somewhere else. There's a weird sky, pink mountains, and a crazy forest with upside down waterfalls. Is that another dimension? I see something inside this gnarly tree. Oh, a Vex. Bow. It's some badass. Okay, so bow. that's for for Vex. A shift spell could get us there, but uh, it, it might not work. Kiki. Healy, yeah, we gotta just keep trying, girl. You keep underestimating yourself. Come on, you, you just ripped a hole in the fire realm last last episode. We can do this. Big giant gauntlets. They're glowing. Uh, it's probably not important. Okay. Yeah. What was that? We're not alone. I'm afraid you've been followed. All oh, right, the thing that was watching them from the path. Dragons! For finding me a vestige. Okay, Sphinx can fight. Maybe I was gonna say y'all run, but I don't know how far you can get. No, Cam. Damn. Okay, maybe Sphinxes are not that badass. You. No, nothing else on him. What is that? Quickly. Y'all, can you hurry up, please? I don't want Cam to die. Cam's chill. And I don't think Osisa would really love you for that either. Oh. For once, the sword actually did something helpful. No, my prize. No. Oh. Bye, Scanlan. Kidnapped again. Unless you can stab him, right, Scanlan? Oh no, we're gonna lose Cam. Someone get up there now, please. Quickly. Oh, Cam. Thank you. Is there anything you can do? Me. Oh, Cisa, like... once more. Oh, Cisa's never gonna forgive you. Well, we're not getting out that way. Bro, find that soft spot you were at before and just leave the sword in there. Literally, it looks like it's gonna drink till he's dead. Leave it in there. Leave it in there, Grog. Leave it in there. <sighs> he saw that coming. So, he was having premonitions. Interesting. That part hasn't, unless it will. I get where Pike was coming from, but I actually think Brog could have killed the dragon. So we're going to the fairy realm now. Wait, where'd they go? Did we lose Grog and Pike? What happened to Pike? Where is she? I, I don't know. I think it has to do with the sword, right? Where are we? Okay, well, some of you made it. Congrats. Damn. Well, good on you. That's not on you, Keila. You slayed that, sis. You managed to pull it out, which once again, you just gotta, just gotta believe in yourself, girl. You've always got it. You just gotta know that you can do it. Go with a little confidence, but you know what? We're getting there. We're getting there. Didn't take as much convincing this time for her to at least try. All right, another great episode. Things are definitely heating up with uh, our group. We got to our next, uh, well, we got to the Sphinx who had to tell us about the next location. Cam, we'll call them. Uh, Cam was a lot of fun. Cam, of course, had to do the trials and everything else. And we can see in the relationship between Cam and Osissa, who is the, the real stickler for rules and who is the, who's just doing it because they have to. I really like the idea that uh, Scanlan was able to once again save the group in a way that was not necessarily conventional. They were all thinking that they had to wound this, this being by physically hurting them, which I mean, they should have known that if he could take them to a whole other dimension, that was going to be very difficult. But Scanlan thought outside the box and thought, what about an emotional wound? He didn't say how the wound had to happen. He just said he had to feel pain. And he brought the pain with bringing up the most painful thing in his life, which is the fact that he can't be with his mate. And so anyway, that was really smart. I really like the, how they keep showing that Scanlan is a little bit different in that the way he approaches things is unique, but can be just as effective. And we also found a little bit more about Scanlan. We see that since season one, Scanlan's been that guy kind of giving the secret glances and the longing looks here and there. And they've mostly been at Pike. But 
Of course, anytime, you know, she even half jokes about being serious about it, he backs off and goes back into, nope, nope, I'm Lothario, I just love love, I love, well, by love, he means he loves ass, but we see that um, in this episode, when she was trying to ask him some serious questions about Grog, he went back to the jokes and she was like, I kind of just need you to be serious once in a while. And he got a look on his face that says that he understands that he he does that. He knows he does that. And I was saying in the episode that typically in life, when you meet somebody who almost always has jokes for something or when you bring up something serious and they respond with a smart aleck remark or sarcasm or jokes, it usually is a sign that there is, it's a deflection mechanism. It basically is trying to deflect from something very real that they don't want to talk about, or maybe they have their own issues with, trauma, insecurities, etc. And my guess is one of two things with Scanlon is either one, he was in love once and got his heart broken really badly. And now as a way to deal with that, he throws himself into fickle relationships and, you know, sexual situations, things where he doesn't have to get attached. And then if things start to get real, he starts to push back. We saw that even in the last episode when he, or back in episode two, when he was like, I don't think we should have to go on this quest. Like, why are we trying to save the world? This is not our problem, right? Being vulnerable and investing is something that Scanlan is very loath to do. He already does have a connection with the members of Vox Machina, of course, but when it comes down to talking about it or really getting to that place where he's super vulnerable, we see that he still puts up those walls and he uses jokes to, to be that, that wall for him. And we heard Cam tell him that when he was first starting the battle, he's like, you know, you're all jokes, no heart. So I, there is a heart in there, obviously, but Scanlan is scared to share it. That's the problem. And he's saying that he really wants it and I believe him, but he's never gonna have love if he doesn't open himself up to it. Love is about being vulnerable. Love is about opening your heart and allowing someone in. That person will have the power to hurt you. As soon as you open your heart to let yourself be loved, you are opening yourself up to be hurt as well. But nine times out of 10, you're gonna get way more out of it than what you're going to regret. So anyway, Scanlon just has to get to that point at some point and realize that it's worth the risk to be vulnerable with someone who he really does care about. But anyhow, they managed to get the vestige and he was saying that the sword is what was necessary in order to find the rest of the vestiges it will show them where all of them are. So that was basically, he won't have to go and see another Oracle basically. So he gave it to Scanlan because he thinks that Scanlan was the most wise sage he'd ever come across. But it looks like somebody betrayed them and told them that where they were going. And that's why this dragon showed up. And of course the dragon wants the vestiges because if they can find all the vestiges and get them, then there's literally nothing left to defeat them, which is very smart. So these dragons are definitely thinking in the long term here. So I'm wondering who the gnome is. No, not the gnome. I'm just wondering who gave them up. I'm trying to figure out who gave them that information. But we see that maybe that ties into what's going on with Grog. Grog and this damn sword, this abusive relationship that he's now in and he's not willing to let go. I'm not sure if Grog is staying. I'm trying to figure out Grog's motivation around holding on to the sword. Like initially I thought it was just a, a case of him thinking, oh, it's a cool weapon and I'm a warrior. So why wouldn't I want a cool weapon? But now I'm starting to think that with this theme that keeps coming up of where's your, where's your strength come from? What's your true strength? And even the uh, Cam brought that up again with Grog. He's like, you don't know the source of your strength yet. I think that Grog thinks a weapon, like that's what he's believing is going to make him strong, right? This, this sword, it's badass. It's, it's, clearly capable of cutting through just about anything, but it's it's not the source of his strength, but he believes it is just like his big ax before that. So he keeps kind of much like Scanlan, not getting to the root of the issue. He's, he's using external things to compensate for something that he is lacking or he feels he needs. And so anyways, he's holding on to this sword. The sword's demands are getting far more pertinent. And it's let him know this episode that if it's going to stop asking soon, that if Grog doesn't feed it blood, it's just going to take it from Grog until there's nothing left. So Grog is feeding it his own blood right now to keep it sated until he can find something to kill. But obviously this is not going to, you know, this is not going to be good. It's going to just continue to be a cycle of Grog having to kill things in order to keep this thing fed. So again, it's just sad that he's not seeing how dangerous this is, but I, again, I guess if he's got his own insecurities, that's the reason why he can't see himself letting go of this sword yet. And the fact that he's hiding it, he clearly knows something is wrong. But finally, 
Pike is starting to realize something's very off about this, his behavior and the fixation. And she's trying to talk to Scanlon about it. We saw that there, that didn't go far, but she knows that there is a problem and she is trying to talk to Grog about it, but he's just not letting it happen. But anyways, we see that Grog had a nightmare and it looks like it was actually a premonition of some kind. And the people in that, the other people who look like him that were in that dream, they're actually real people who are in another place right now. So I'm wondering if it's because of the vestige that that one guy is wearing that Grog's having this dream, I'm not sure. Or maybe there's some kind of connection between all the people who are like him, I'm not sure. But either way, Grog knows that there's a connection here and he has not shared that either. And he also had a premonition about hurting Pike with this sword. And we see that that's what ended up happening because when they were fighting the dragon, he became so bloodlusty because of the sword that he didn't listen to Pike and Pike was trying to, of course, snap him out of it. And of course she didn't think in a million years that he would stab her. But again, I don't know if he stabbed her or if the sword moved on its own because I think the sword is capable of doing a little bit of that as long as someone is wielding it. So right now we got Pike who is hurt badly. I mean, I don't know whether or not she can heal herself. Let's hope so. We ended the episode with Keyleth managing to get most of the team out, but or all of them, but for some reason, the spell didn't bring them all there. We have uh, the main group there, but we see that Pike and Scanlan and Grog are someplace else, and we don't know where that someplace is. And it's a bit scary because Pike is really not in a good way. And I think the magic bag is probably not with them either, which might have a pot to heal her. So we'll have to see what happens and whether or not all three of them are together as well. But I feel like Grog and Pike probably are together because they need to have this conversation and hopefully Pike will be able to talk some sense into Grog. But I feel like the sword might be one of the reasons why Keyleth may not have been able to maybe do the transport because the sword is dark magic. So I don't know. We'll have to see in the next episode. But yeah, this was another really good one. A little bit more on the deep side until we got to that final battle. But it's also interesting to know that the dragons are on a hunt for the vestiges as well. So that adds yet another layer of complexity to this already crazy journey. But yeah, I think it's really fun to watch. So I enjoyed it. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next one.